All right, so get this. It was one of those mellow Saturdays, you know, the kind where you've got no plans and you're just wandering downtown. I stumbled upon this old pawn shop. I'm talking real old, like straight out of a 90s movie. You could practically smell the stories behind each item. Dusty air mixed with that age-old wood scent. I remember thinking, man, places like this still exist? You'd hear the floorboards complain under your feet with every step, giving off this nostalgic vibe. There was a radio somewhere playing a faint jazz tune adding to the ambiance. The shop had this aura, you know, the kind that pulls you in. Every corner was packed with stuff, from old records to faded photographs and vintage watches. Honestly, I didn't need anything but something about that shop. I just had to explore. So I'm wandering the aisles, right? Taking my sweet time, just soaking in the oddities and antiques. I spot this vintage camera, an old typewriter with rusty keys, and man, there was even a taxidermied squirrel in a little suit. Crazy stuff. But out of all these oddities, something in particular caught my eye. It was this doll, different from any toy I've ever seen. Not your typical porcelain thing, no. This one was eerier. Made out of something that looked way too much like dried flesh. I mean, who even makes something like that? It's the kind of item that you'd see and think, who the heck pawned this and why? I grabbed the doll, inspecting it closer, and that's when the shopkeeper chimed in. He's like, that there's got a history, my friend. I was intrigued. I mean, I've got a thing for horror and the strange, so hearing that piqued my interest even more. I mean, at that point, how could I not buy it? I'm thinking this is going to be the crown jewel of my weird collection. So I asked the guy, how much? And we did a bit of back and forth. Eventually, we settled on a price. Man, I was buzzing the entire way home. Kept looking at the doll through the bag, thinking about where I'd place it. It's not every day you come across something this unique, you know. I got home and went straight to my horror collection room. That's right, I've got a room just for that. Don't judge. I set the doll on a shelf right next to this creepy mask I got from New Orleans and an old Ouija board I've never dared to use. And let me tell you, it fit right in. I even did a little video for my buddies like, could check out what I scored today. They thought I was nuts, but hey, they just don't get the thrill of it. So that night I'm wiped out, right? Hit the sack pretty early. My room's got this dim ambient light that seeps through the door. You know, to keep it from being pitch black because I'm a grown man, but total darkness? Nah, not my thing. I'm just drifting off, but somewhere in that space between awake and asleep, I thought I heard something. A soft, like, dragging sound. Figured it was just the house settling, or maybe my imagination playing tricks, so I brushed it off and dozed off. But man, I wake up in the middle of the night with this sharp sting on my hand, as if something just bit me. I jolted up, turned on the lights, and there's this bite mark. Not big, but definitely there. I'm freaking out a bit, thinking maybe a spider or something. Then I remembered the doll. I rushed to check on it, and there it is, just chilling on the shelf like nothing happened. But now, looking at it, it felt different, kind of more real. I don't know. Maybe it was just my half-awake brain messing with me. I slapped on some ointment, went back to bed, but let me tell you, I kept one eye open for the rest of that night. So the next day, I'm at my favorite coffee spot, but instead of chilling with my usual cold brew, I'm googling stuff like weird reactions to bug bites and can dolls come to life? Yeah, I know how it sounds. My buddy Jake shoots me a text asking about last night's cool find. I tell him about the weird bite, half expecting him to laugh it off. But he sends me this link to a forum about haunted items. I'm diving deep, reading stories, theories. Some far out there, but a few. A little too close to home. Throughout the day, I'm constantly glancing at my hand, and then my thoughts drift back to that doll. The more I thought about it, the more I felt... watched. I mean, I've always been into horror but this was hitting a bit too close to reality. Nighttime comes and I'm back home. Normally, I'd unwind with some TV, but that evening, 
I was more into setting up security measures. Yeah, I actually put some salt around the shelf, something I read online, and considered setting up my old camcorder to record the room. Look, it sounds wacky, but man, that unease was real. Trying to shake off the feeling, I figured maybe some music would help, so I'm blasting my chill playlist, just trying to get the vibes right. So night falls and I'm thinking, all right, just another night, right? But the memory of that bite had me a little on edge. Decided to change it up and crash on the couch, just to put some distance between me and the doll room. I'm cozying up under a blanket, got some late night show playing on the TV to drown out the silence, and just when I'm about to drift off, I swear, I felt a tug on my ankle. I jumped up so fast, probably knocked over my bowl of chips or something. And there at the foot of the couch, nothing. No doll, no creepy crawly, just stillness. But when I look down at my ankle, there's this new bite mark, fresh and stinging. And now I'm piecing it together. It's the doll, right? Had to be. Only question was, where the heck did it go? I spent the next while checking every nook and cranny. Behind the curtains, under the furniture, no sign. But when I finally got to the horror room, I saw that the salt line, disturbed. And that doll, right back on its shelf, looking as lifeless as ever. Yet the atmosphere was thick, heavy, like something was very, very wrong. Okay, by this point I'm thinking I've officially lost it. It's broad daylight and I'm getting tormented by a pawn shop doll? Crazy, right? But the bite marks? Those were real. So, my first thought? Get rid of the thing. I bagged it up, drove across town, and tossed it into a dumpster behind some diner. It felt like breaking up with someone. You know, relief mixed with a little regret. Like, man, I actually like that creepy thing. Back home, I tried to distract myself. Played some video games, ordered the greasiest pizza I could find. Anything to feel normal. But as night crept in, there was this nagging feeling. Like when you forget to lock the front door or turn off the stove. And I thought, what if that doll finds its way back? Sounds nuts, right? In a last-ditch effort, I hit up that forum Jake sent me to earlier. People were talking about all sorts of rituals, but nothing seemed foolproof. I did find one post about locking haunted items in a box filled with salt. Seemed worth a shot. I prepped the box, just in case. I didn't even know if the doll would return, but man, I wasn't taking any chances. The next day, I was back at that pawn shop. I mean, if anyone had answers, it had to be the shopkeeper, right? I walked in, and he eyed me with this knowing look, like he half expected me to come back. I laid it out straight for him. Look, man, something's up with that doll. He took a deep breath, paused, and then started on this tale. Said the doll was brought in by this old lady. Said she couldn't handle it anymore. She mentioned a curse, something about a tribal ritual. Whoever possesses the doll becomes its food, I guess. But it's never full. Always hungry. Always returning. The shopkeeper looked me dead in the eye and said, Once it chooses you, it doesn't let go. My heart sank, man. Why didn't he tell me this when I bought it? He offered me a refund, but honestly... That wasn't going to solve my problem. I left the shop feeling more trapped than before. It wasn't about the money, it was about breaking free from this... thing. And as I drove home, every little noise, every shadow felt like a reminder. That doll was out there and it had chosen me. Back at my place, it was game on. I was determined to put an end to this nightmare. First thing, I checked the trash in the dumpster. No sign of the doll. That sinking feeling? Man, it was back in full force. I tried calling Jake, thinking maybe he'd have some more insight. Straight to voicemail, figures. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Every creak in the house had me on edge. I kept expecting to see that thing lurking in the shadows. But hours passed and nothing. I started to think maybe I'd overreacted. Maybe it was just some sick coincidence. But right as I was settling into that thought, I heard something. A dragging sound, slow, deliberate, coming up the stairs.
I'm not proud to say it, but man, I was scared. Like, about to pee my pants scared. I armed myself with the first thing I could grab, a baseball bat from my college days. Waiting, listening, the dragging sound got closer, and then in the dim light from the hallway I saw it. The doll. But not as I remembered. It looked fuller, almost bloated, with tiny, pronounced teeth peeking from its stretched lips. In a rush of adrenaline, I took a swing, connecting with the doll. It flew across the room, crashing into the wall. I wasted no time. I grabbed it, forced it into the salt-filled box I'd prepared earlier, and sealed it shut. Panting, heart racing, I sat back, box secured. It was over, or so I thought. After that adrenaline-packed showdown, I was spent. Sleep was the only thing on my mind. The sealed box was placed in the far corner of my room. Some part of me thought, if I can see it, maybe it won't do anything. I must have dozed off at some point, but it was that eerie silence that woke me up. You know, the kind that's almost loud because it's so... still. I strained to hear anything, but there was not a... Maybe I'd finally gotten a win against the doll, but then I felt it, a sharp pain on my arm. I flicked on the light and there it was, the doll, out of the box and biting down on my arm. It's hard to describe the sheer panic I felt. I mean, how did it get out? I fought it off, flinging it across the room. That's when I noticed the box. The salt? It was wet, like it had absorbed moisture from the air, rendering it useless. I didn't give it a second thought. I grabbed the doll, ran downstairs, and chucked it into the fireplace. The flames engulfed it, turning it to ash. I sat there, watching, ensuring every bit of it was gone. The weight lifted, and for the first time in days, I felt... peace. So you'd think that's where our creepy tale ends, right? Burned the doll, problem solved. But here's the kicker. A couple days later, I was grabbing coffee at a local cafe. I overhear this mom talking to her kid about this super unique doll she just bought from a pawn shop, said it was made of some old dried materials and looked so realistic. Five blood ran cold. Was it the same doll or even freakier? Are there more of them? I can't be sure and honestly I'm not about to find out. One haunted doll adventure is enough for me. If you enjoyed the story and want to hear more of my let's say adventures, hit that like button and share with your friends. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss what comes next. Take care and keep those nightlights on.